<laughs> Good evening everybody. Hope everyone's doing well today. Perfect weather once again. Nice cold breeze on the face. Not too dark, not too bright. And I am looking forward to playing some XCOM when I get home. But of course you didn't come here to find out about what I'm going to do when I get home. No, you want to hear me talk more about politics, so why don't we get this show on the road? You know it's dire. When Diane Abbott, in your own party, is siding against you when it comes down to the winter fuel payments. I can't really remember one time why I've ever given credit to Diane Abbott. But you know what? Even a broken clock has to be right twice a day at some point. But you know what? If she really does stand against what Keir the Traitor Starmer is doing, credit to her. Though that being said, she probably doesn't need any more credit considering her and Labour MPs and MPs in general get like 91 grand as part of their yearly sal salary. Now, with that in mind, I also want you to bear in mind as well that an average pensioner usually gets around like 13k. So they're getting, I believe if my maths is correct, exactly a seventh of what an MP gets. Technically less because I haven't included the extra odd bits on the end of the 91k. But I'm not gonna sit here and get pedantic about that shit because the bottom line in what's happening with the winter fuel payments is absolutely disgusting. The fact that Keir the Traitor Starmer wants to take away 300 quid from every pensioner that is in this country, their winter fuel payments is nothing short of abhorrent. These are the people who have paid in their taxes longer than any other living person on this planet. Unless someone here is telling me they have lived for 200 fucking years. But it turns out that Keir the Traitor Starmer may be getting sued over this. He may be having some legal action taken against him for breaching human rights, for effectively violating our pensioners. And that's just one of the things he's facing legal action for. He's also potentially facing legal action for his little embargo against Israel, taking away Israel's weapons and shit, which, to be fair, we shouldn't be getting involved in a war with the Middle East. But there are some legalities about this that Israel lawyers can now take Keir the traitor Starmer to court for. I believe one issue also regarding human, human rights and another one regarding like the conditions about the weapons being sent in the first place. Now it's not exactly the stuff that I wanted Keir the traitor Starmer to be in court for, but at least it's a bloody good start. I personally though would like to see Keir the traitor Starmer in court facing criminal charges of treason and breaching human rights. Much like Tony the war criminal Blair, who sent all those soldiers in to their deaths on a false pretense. When are we going to see the traitor law brought back into this country so that then we can punish these fuckers under such laws? A vote should be put to the British people. Do you wish to bring back the traitor law in the United Kingdom? Though, to be fair, I suspect Keir the traitor Starmer won't want to do that because I think we all know that that would get a resounding victory against Keir the traitor Starmer. And from that point on, he can be impeached and charged and ultimately sent to prison. But you know what really pisses me off today? Something I found out in one of the articles that I read during my lunchtime. Keir the traitor Starmer has the audacity to say that the far right is basically selling snake oil. And when I saw this, I am literally going to do my literal reaction on this as soon as I saw the article. Keir, Keir Starmer, and I'm only using his real name once, advises that far right is selling snake oil. What? Are you fucking serious? I want whatever drugs you're fucking doing, mate. 
Well, as long as they're not Class A, they're going to get me in trouble. Anyway, I want to know what drugs you're doing, matey, because we're not the ones selling that snake oil. You are. You're the one, Keir the Traitor Starmer, who has been peddling more misinformation than any supposed far-right groups that you could care to mention. You're the one who is going out of their way to maliciously persecute ordinary patriots and parents who are concerned for their country and their kids' future. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. If Keir the Traitor Starmer actually mentioned that live on air, he'd be gone out of office. Just like that. His position is already untenable. But saying that would make it even more so. He is allergic to the truth, as I am allergic to salad. Though in my defense, I actually don't mind salad that much. It's more a matter of, and this is something I normally don't indulge, but I don't really care whether something's healthy or not, just as long as it tastes good. So that's really my real re weakness. But I digress, you're not here to hear about me having salad or not. But that man really is allergic to the truth. He is allergic to doing the right thing. If he was given a choice between jumping into a pit of fire and doing the right thing, he would choose the pit of fire every fucking time. But here's something else as well. Keir the traitor Starmer should not only be in court facing treason charges, as well as obviously the fact that he's going against the British people, the fact he's going out of his way to violate pensioners' human rights and treat them like his own personal fucking doormat, but he should also be in court for defamation and slander of ordinary British people. Nothing would please me more than seeing Keir the traitor Starmer in the docks having to face ordinary citizens, not just people like me, but people like you as well, having to sit there and take the heat in the dock as he is basically being roasted over his defamation and slander against ordinary people. People who have kids, like that woman I went past, who have kids who want to be able to grow up happy, healthy, and not having to worry about the fucking future, bluntly speaking. He says that we're the ones selling snake oil, Yet he's the one constantly giving out misinformation. He's the one, alongside his mainstream media, who is merely one arm of his establishment hand, with the police being the other, he's the one going out of his way to libelously slander every concerned pair, pair bleh, stroke number one, every parent and patriot as far right. There is nothing far right about them. Yes, I do accept that people like Thomas Burley, maybe it's not a good idea to go out of your way to set a migrant hotel on fire, which does come under arson, which is a pretty serious crime. However, the reason people are doing this is because they're sick and tired of waiting for the police and waiting for our establishment to actually start fucking listening to them and do their job. I.e. protect the realm and protect all of its inhabitants, not just that so-called religion of peace that is Islam. But Keir the traitor Starmer would rather be known as a sectarianist bastard than actually the heroic prime minister that we actually need. But then let's face it, he's probably never gonna reach that stage in a million years considering he and the Green Party on, and Tony Blair, more importantly, are now trying to tell Keir the Traitor Starmer to get us ever closer ties to the EU. No! We don't need closer ties to the EU. The whole point of 17.4 million people voting in that Brexit referendum was so that we would unconditionally leave the European Union and never go back to them. The same globalist bloc that was charging us 55 million pounds a day gross for what benefits? 
Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? There are no benefits? Well, need I say more? What did we get in return? We got mass uncontrolled immigration. We got no control over our borders. We had no sovereignty, so we couldn't actually decide whether or not we want to govern ourselves. We were bankrupting ourselves to this unelected bunch of bureau twats in Brussels to get nothing in return but misery. Which is something, of course, the mainstream media will not tell you. How is it that Keir the Traitor Starmer can have the absolute gall, the absolute nerve, to ignore 17.4 million people? How is that? How does anybody go by that logic? You could put a gun to my head as I was Prime Minister and say, you're going to put us back in the EU. And I'll tell you, I'd rather fucking die, quite frankly. Because I'm not going to betray the wishes of the British people. The British people should be being put first, not last. Keir the traitor Starmer would rather appease Islam and allow in an unending wave of illegal immigrants who have no legal or human right to be here. He would rather focus on sending Thomas Burley, yes it was arson, but he would rather focus on sentencing them to nine years in prison, while people who attack our police forces are being let off without charges. He would rather appease an intolerant religion that sees the left as useful idiots than he would look after the indigenous British people he is supposed to protect and serve. But he's the one saying, we're selling snake oil. Go to fucking hell, Keir the traitor Starmer. Go straight to hell and never come back, quite frankly. Because you are not worthy of the title, sir. The only, the only title that you deserve involving sir is disservice to the British people. That's the only title you're able to hold up to, or traitor, as I've kept labelling you time and time again, Keir the traitor Starmer. You're a man who is not fit to run a bath, let alone the country. And you know what? The British people have been very kind to you over these last four or five years. They've been very kind not to unleash the full force of their wrath upon you. Let me be clear, I'm not advocating for violent revolution. Never have, never will. I'm not advocating for anybody to attack you, Keir the traitor Starmer. But I have advocated for you to be arrested because you are effectively breaching human rights. You are effectively putting the illegals before us. You're a man, Keir the traitor Starmer, who literally would run over his own grandmother for political point scoring. That's the kind of man you are. You're a person who maliciously persecutes the British people for just being British, for being concerned about their kids, for not wanting them to get stabbed in the face. Now, I don't know about you, but I think Keir the traitor Starmer would look good in an orange jumpsuit and being in a prison cell. I think he would look very good in jail. I wonder how the other prisoners would treat him. I don't know if most of them would treat him with contempt for the way he's treated ordinary people, or if they'd celebrate him being in there because of the fact that he's letting out all the killers and the rapists into our, our cities and our streets and filling the prisons up with people who are supposedly far right, who are growling at a police dog, posting memes on the internet, shouting at police. Where was your conviction, and I'm not talking about the prison conviction, but where's your conviction as far as imprisoning the Islamic extremists who are going out of their way to incite hatred, who are going out of their way to attack the police, who are going out of their way chanting for jihad which even police chiefs are now admitting they were too slow 
and that they were biased as far as pro-Palestine is concerned. Where is your approach for them? Where is your approach for wanting to make sure these pensioners are not going to potentially freeze to fucking death in this winter because you want to line your MPs with an extra 300 quid when you already have expenses that are paid out of our taxpayer money. And for what, Keir the Traitor Starmer? For you to piss our money up the wall? To piss off the British public? To piss off the elderly and the infirm who are now going to potentially be dead because of you, Keir the Traitor Starmer? Where is your passion? Oh, you don't have any. You're right, like Rishi the Slippery Sunak. No fire in your belly. Emotionless, soulless, robot-like eyes who has the utmost evil, blackest heart. A man who would rather screw his own people than serve them. How dare you, Keir the Traitor Starmer. If you think we're angry now, you haven't seen anything yet. And to my subscribers, to anybody who has had enough of our treacherous establishment and this dictatorship, I mean dictatorship, or maybe I was right first time, we have a new protest coming up. We have a new protest coming up 26th of October. Chance for us to gather again in London to voice and showcase our absolute contempt and anger towards this establishment. Keir the Traitor Starmer has indeed launched an attack against ordinary people, a campaign of fear, a campaign of basically bullying towards the British people because he wants to bully us into silence. I'll tell you one thing, he sure as fuck ain't silencing me. He ain't bullying me into submission. And if they do come and arrest me, I'm pleading not guilty all the fucking way. Because at the end of the day, I have a right under Article 10 of the Human Rights Act to be able to voice my opinions and my anger so long as I am not inciting violence or inciting terrorism which is something the mainstream media are not going to tell you. We have every right to broadcast our opinions, to showcase our opinions of this traitorous establishment that seeks to be the ones to hold the portcullis up while our enemies flood in through those gates and inflict nothing but death, decay and destruction on our country. But do you know what gives me the most fire in my belly? Do you know what really grinds my gears? Knowing that my nan, bless her, is 80 plus years old. And she's potentially having her winter fuel savings cut. Because of this vile human being that is Keir the Traitor Starmer. That's what angers me. Knowing that my nan's going to end up suffering this winter. Which is why I will always showcase two middle fingers to Keir the Traitor Starmer. Now let me switch hands so I can get the other one. Because that's the way I see Keir the Traitor Starmer. A vile piece of shit who has no right to be our Prime Minister. As I said, I wouldn't trust him running a bath, let alone this country. A man who is so brazen with his contempt of the British people that he will literally see us all burn while he appeases one section of people who are maybe a minority now, but will become a majority as they continue breeding like rabbits and breed and breed with their inbred cousins and all that and are going to push this intolerant ideology that is Islam. But on the 26th of October, we will be able to showcase to Keir the Traitor Starmer exactly how angry we are and that we are not going to be code by some thug, some bully 
who thinks himself superior to the British people. People shouldn't fear their governments. Governments should fear their people. That slime ball wouldn't know what bravery and courage is, even if it came along and bit him on the neck. That man is a coward, nothing more. A cowardly, traitorous scumbag who would, as said, rather appease Islam than protect his people. And I will never stop saying this, because as I've said many times before, and you can almost say it with me at this point, I'm not gonna sugarcoat a motherfucking thing. I'm not gonna mince my words, and I am going to say it exactly how it is. And I will do my best not to bullshit you. And unlike Keir the traitor Starmer, the mainstream media, and the vast majority of the police, if I do make a mistake, I'll put my hands up and say I fucked up. Can you say that of them? <laughs> Honesty? What's that? That's basically what they say. And I'll be brutally honest, the more elderly people that get on this bus, the more pissed off I am. Not because I'm pissed off at the elderly, because obviously I respect them. For the most part. There are a few obvious exceptions, like the ones that try to vandalise the Magna Carta glass. But they're a whole bunch of NPCs at the end of the day. But I'm talking about the real pensioners who have put in more than any other person in this country. Those people deserve to be treated with respect. But here the traitor Starmer would rather put his boot all over them. Remember, 13,000 is about the average of what a pensioner has, while Keir the Traitor Starmer and other MPs are on 91 grand and having expenses paid out at the taxpayer's expense. I'll tell you where that money could go. Slash their salaries in half and let's fill that 22 billion pound black hole they keep preaching on about. I think that would be a very good start. Oh, but they'd be against that because then they couldn't live their cushy little lifestyles, could they? They wouldn't be able to enjoy the luxuries that they do. Whereas I'm lucky if I get any fucking luxuries, bluntly speaking. Thank you. Last time I checked, here the traitor Starmer should be serving all of the British people, as I said. Not just one section of them. So he should start treating the pensioners with a bit more fucking respect and actually make sure they get their winter fuel payments. If he had any balls at all, whether up here or down there, or in my case, both, to be able to say, you know what, I've made a mistake. I'm gonna let you have your 300 pounds because 300 pounds for these fuckers should be nothing. Like they get paid nearly four times what I get currently paid right now. I would kill, metaphorically speaking, of course, to be in a position of those MPs, to be paid £91,000 a year. And unlike them, I wouldn't be pissing your money up the wall. I wouldn't be taking the piss out of the British people. I wouldn't be treating the elderly as a resource. Do you know what Keir the Traitor Starmer thinks of the elderly? He sees them as old bags of cash, nothing more. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that completely reprehensible, quite frankly. I'm struggling to contain myself. My anger is that fucking big. But my point is, Keir the Traitor Starmer, as I said, sees the elderly as a resource. He sees you lot as either a resource or a threat that needs to be imprisoned because Obviously, we've seen what he does to anybody who has a differing opinion to him. He likes to send the boys round and have them locked up for posting memes on the internet or for saying mate, mean things on the internet. And while I accept it's not acceptable to post anything inciting terrorism like blowing up the Bell End churches, it doesn't change the fact that we have ordinary British people who are being sentenced just for the words they say. How is it somebody could get 20 months in prison for posting things on the internet while a child rapist is allowed to walk free? Tell me, make it make sense. Keir the traitor Starmer is the only person who should be in jail right now. 
he shouldn't be locking up supposed far-right protesters unless they have unequivocally committed acts of violence, acts of vandalism, acts of terrorism. He's the only one who should be in jail right now. Not Elon Musk, who he is basically hunting down. That's why they're trying to ban X in the UK. Because the way to look at it is it's one of the few proprietors of free speech. It is one of the few places you can go and actually express your opinions. I guess to be fair though, I guess if I was in Keir the Traitor Starmer's position, I'd be a little bit worried about the supposed far right. And getting this bloody coat off as well. Anyway, I'd be very worried about the supposed far right. I certainly would have been very concerned if there was political proportional representation. Because at that point, it would be a matter of, instead of being like, oh, there's only five MPs in here, no need to worry, guys, they're nothing. They're just a small number. If we actually had political representation, and I've said it before, and I will say it again, Keir the traitor Starmer would be sweating in his boots right now. He would be sweating his tiny little bollocks off because he'd be like, oh shit, there's 70 MPs in here who can all challenge my views. But of course we don't have political representation because we still have that shit first past the post system. I guarantee you, if he had more political representation against him, that man would be a lot more concerned. He wouldn't be trying to trample over the British people. He'd actually show us a bit more respect. He'd actually treat us like human beings, not second-class citizens in our own fucking country. Last time I checked, natives to United Kingdom were called British people. Not Muslim people. Not illegal immigrants. Not Eritreans or Pakistanis or Afghanis or whatever. No. British people. But Keir the Traitor Starmer does not know the concept of native British people. He instead knows of two things. Islam and uncontrolled immigration. Both of which is what he appeases to. He would rather have mass uncontrolled tides of foreign invaders, aliens, coming to our country, stealing our jobs, stealing our benefits, stealing our resources, stealing our credibility, stealing our very identity. People who would rather crush this fucking country, crush it underfoot, rather than integrate with society like good people have. So, folks, if you're like me, if you're pissed off and fucking fed up of the way Keir the Traitor Starmer and this Labour government are treating us, get down to London on the 26th of October. I am also going to be linking in the description below, in one of my first ever moves, I believe, I am going to be linking an email address, which I'm hoping Tommy Robinson can get into contact with me with, or anybody who is interested in speaking with me can get in contact with me. And hell, even ordinary people can share their stories, share their support, share whatever. I'll listen to it all. I'll read to, read it all. And I'm hoping that through collaboration and cooperation, something Keir the Traitor Starman Lowe's fuck all about, we can actually hold this establishment to account once more. Because after all, what does Islam have over us? They can come together just like that. We need to start doing the same. We either stand together or we fall as one. Never forget that. Keir the Traitor Starmer is doing everything he can, whether it's political prisoners, draconian laws, or just downright resentment and contempt towards the British people. He's doing everything he can to divide and conquer. We need to make sure he doesn't do that. 
We need to come together and we need to take out the trash, metaphorically speaking, and place it in the dumpster of history where it rightfully belongs. Because at the end of the day, he's counting on us to not come together. Right now, he's not considering us that much of a threat yet because we haven't all come together. We need to do so. Put your differences aside. Put petty squabbling to one side until after we reclaim the country. We need to settle old grudges and come together, unite the right, unite the kingdom. And we need to be in our hundreds of thousands when we march in London on the 26th of October. Because like I said, there's only one of two ways this is going to end. It's either going to end with a peaceful resolution or it's going to end with a violent revolution. And I don't want the latter. But we have to come together. Because I said, united we stand, divided we fall. And it's either we all stand together or we all fall as one. <laughs>